This is my favorite time of the day. Hey, 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 this is my favorite time of the day. This is my favorite time. This is my favorite time. Oh, my day. This is my favorite time of the day. Ooh, ooh, this is favorite time of the day. This is my favorite time of my day. One more time, this is my favorite time of the day. I know that this is my favorite time of the day. All right, this is my favorite time of the day to get into the Word of God. And we don't need this mic. And y'all know I can't play. But I like having fun because I think the Word of God is just that type of life for me. My favorite time of the day. Father, we thank you today. Being the day where we get a chance to get into your Word and to watch you illuminate the treasures that have been saved and hid for us, for anybody who finally came back to search you out and find out there is something in this word that makes sense. It makes life make sense. And I appreciate your being a student in your class as you being my teacher. Thank you for technology, Lord, these days. And thank you that you will allow me to see what you will have for me to say and share as a student. That's who I am. I'm just a student of the word in search, trying to see whether or not what I've been told is actually what is written in this book. And I come to you as a child. I come to you with no nothing but want to know what you said and share with somebody who might be interested as well as I am. Uh, thank you for everything that you did. You did it well. You did it good. And thank you for sharing it with us. Left us a copy of what you did so we can mimic you and be a part of what you have planned for me. Thank you for forgiving me and thank you for teaching me how to forgive. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am so excited that I get a chance in the operation in 2 Samuel chapter 15, 16. We're going to 16. And I get excited because I get a chance to look at chapter 17 today. Because after I read 16, I share it, then I go straight into 17. All right, in chapter 15, because I like to show what we learn in 15, David had a friend whose name was Hush. Shh. Hey, David's friend. He had to go back to find out what was going on with his son because his son was... Uh, trying to kill him so he can take his position. And in that, I found out that, you know, you really find out what people are all about, especially when they want, to, want your position, they want your power. So that's what happened to David yesterday. His son is trying to take over, and then he found out that his best friend, Ahithophel, 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 I like to say those names like this so I can remember who they were by their behavior. A hit the fail. He, he, he didn't, God didn't, okay, we're going to find out what happened to him. A hit the fail was one of David's, David's, uh, he was his counselor. And David confided in a hit the fail. But a hit the fail turned his back on David and went to Absalom. Absalom. I look at his name like, you're trying to be absent. A hit the fail, you're trying to fail. That's me just talking. 
All right. But David did have some true people who were with him and some were very new. So just because you are famous and you got a lot of people that follow you, you can check whether or not those people that we're following really in line with the word, or they might be in line with the word, but what part of the word are God is God identifying us since we are in line with it? Well, we, when we say in line with the word, we're just trying to make sure that these people are following God's uh, lesson plan. All right, so now we got uh, Ahithophel is a problem. Absalom is a problem. Hushai is a good friend of David. Um, this guy who came in and told David, uh, oh, Ziba, oh, Ziba, that's a problem. Mephibosheth is missing. David's uh, best friend's son who was crippled. He's not here, but we're going to find out more about him. His name is coming up. And oh, who are we going to meet today? All right, so we got all of these people today, yesterday. Ahithophel, not good. Absalom, not good. Uh, Husha, good. I mean, when I say good, I mean doing their part. Abathar, that's good. Zadok, that's a good person. These two were priests, and they had two sons. All of these was good. So everybody is not on the wrong side. So there's some people that David could trust. Because sometimes when you deal with so many people that you trust, and then you meet other people, you almost tend to say, I don't trust nobody. But David was very careful. He called a spade a spade when, it, when he had a spade. And when it was not, he didn't just get an image of a person and decide everybody's like that. And sometimes we do that. And that hurts us because this person really hurt us. So therefore, we don't trust anybody. But David said, no, I'm a man after God's own heart. I know that because God said it about me. I give everybody individually a chance to, you know, make themselves known. And then I let, the, I, then I let God reveal it. So let's go into chapter 16, which we need chapter 15 to understand chapter 16. And that's how we're going to learn how God flows. What did God say? In the beginning, day one, I did this. Day two, I did this. Day three, I did this. Day four, I did this. What is God trying to tell us? That I got order and we need to follow it and read his word according to order. You cannot go into 2 Samuel and just grab a scripture and they all that man-made materials and delivering people, all that stuff. Because the only way they can get what you said God said, you got to give them all your notes. Save yourself some time. Just get God's word and let it flow. Chapter 1 needs chapter 2. Well, chapter 2 needs chapter 1 and so on. So ever since I've been traveling from Genesis and haven't read the word for the last, since 1995, I never saw it as easy to read as when I just start paying attention to how it flowed, which gives me information that I, I, I know these people. I'm, I'm learning their behaviors. I learn who to trust. Then I take the people out of the word and I start lining them up with people that I deal with every day. And I say, oh, you got the spirit of Mephibosheth. Oh, you got the spirit of Hushai. Or you got the spirit of Ahithophel. It means that a lot of people trust you because you have had a word from the Lord. And they think that your mouth is the oracle of God. But your heart don't match your words. So you get a chance to learn who they are because there is, I'm in the book. We all in this book. We just need to find out who are we based on what God has already judged. All right, so I'm getting ready to read the 16th chapter. And if I was a teacher and my students came in, they would have to, well, I am a teacher. But if I had a class and my students came in, they would have to go over everything that we learned so far. And then we'll build on that. And then we'll grow and learn more and watch God show us some things that has been sitting here on the shelf. And he's going to unfold or reveal those things to us. Father, let us see everything that you need us to see to understand chapter 16 because we can't hardly wait to get to chapter 17. Well, we have to wait. All right. And all right, we start off. Um, um, here's David. David is the star of the show. Well, Absalom, Absalom and his son trying to take over, but David, God is just watching. And it, now the star of the show is God. 
And so let's see what's going on in here. Verse 1. If I were you, I wouldn't trust me. I get that word to see whether or not I'm telling the truth. And when David was a little past the top of the hill. Now you walk in there and you read that. What is David doing going a little past the top of the hill? He running from his son. Trying to get those people out of the, out of the position to be killed by his son. Hurt. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of ass saddled, saddled, saddled and upon them 200 loaves of bread and a hundred bunches of raisins and a hundred of summer fruits and a bottle of wine. And we're talking about a bottle of wine. We're talking about enough wine to, to, to give a, a whole lot of people something to drink if they were thirsty. Sometimes, I, because I read the 15 and the 16 at the same time, I might have mentioned some names that I thought were 15, but they actually are emphasizing the 16th. So my apologies for that. So this guy named Ziba, he was the servant of Saul when Saul was in leadership. Saul is now dead. Ziba was over his, he was his servant. He ran his household or things that uh, Saul needed. So uh, David wanted to bless somebody that was in Jonathan's family. So they said, well, you know, oh, Ziba know what, if anybody related to Jonathan is still alive. So David called, called Ziba and said, Ziba, do you know anybody still alive that's related to De uh, Jonathan? Ziba said, yeah, I know this, this young boy. He got a, he left a boy here. Well, he ain't no young boy now. He got a family. And he said, what's his name? He said, Mephibosheth. And David said, well, I want to see him. He said, well, you know he got a problem with his feet. You know, when, when, they, when he heard tell of his daddy being killed and his granddaddy Saul being killed, the maid, the girl that was holding on to him, they, he fell and he got crippled in both of his feet. David said, go get the boy. So he met uh, Mephibosheth and told him, said, I want you to eat with me every day at this table. Your dad, I told your dad I won't take good care of anybody related to him, and you, I'm going to take good care of you. Then he told old Ziba, now that you used to be Saul's servant, that be Mephibosheth's servant. So get your boys and your servants and go out there and, and plow the land and get a boy the fruit and treat him like I would treat him if I was. Well, anyway, treat him right. So now we got a war going on or an attack going on. David is running. And here come old Ziba. Old Ziba. Ziba came up to David. He brought 200 loaves of bread and 100 bunches of raisins and 100 of summer fruits and a bottle of wine. Old Ziba said, oh, yeah, I want to make sure. Now, you would think that, at least I would, Okay, you, you you either a nice guy or um, let's just find out. So King David saw Ziba say, hey, Ziba. And the king said unto Ziba, what meanest thou by this stuff? What's, what's up with this? What, what you got all this stuff for? Because, you know, really we ain't that hungry, but since you got the food, well, let's just try to get an understand what's up with all, all of these. And Ziba said, well, the asses be for you and your household to ride on. I got you something to ride on. Mm -hmm. David said, okay, keep talking. And the bread and the summer fruit for the young men to eat. So I just brought them something to eat. Okay, all right. And the wine, well, that's such be as faint in the wilderness may drink. So David said, you got, uh, got me something to ride on. You got us some, some bread. You got us some fruit. You got us some wine, right? Okay. And the king said, I uh, understand that. That's stuff. And the king said, and where is the master's son? Where's that boy I told you? Where's that young man I told you to look after this crippling his feet? Jonathan's son. Where is he? I see all this stuff you got. But as a shepherd over sheep, I want to know. I understand you got gifts and food. But the last time I gave you an assignment, I told you to take care of uh, my people said, where is he? See, that's a man that says, I am not looking for all the stuff that you bring. Where's your assignment? 
And kings and king and the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he about it in Jerusalem. Well, he said, He told me this today. Today shall be the house of Israel restored to me, the kingdom of my father. Now you saying to me, now David, now okay, David, listen to this guy. He says, So you telling me you brought all this food. And right now, I'm, 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 I'm just listening to you. You saying Mephibah says so he want to be king. And he going to be restored back to him. That's what you said. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, you are all that pertain unto Mephibah said. And Ziba, he said, Behold, you can, have all that, you can have all that stuff that I gave to Mephibah said. I got time to deal with that. Stop right here. The problem with David right here, number one, David is human. David is tired. David not thinking right here. Now, you got a lot of commentators who say, we don't really know whether this guy was lying. Right now, we don't. But let's just say that, that let's just say that what he's saying is not true. Let's look at it like this. What Phoebus said is crippling both his feet. In Leviticus, God told Moses to write that if anybody that is going to work right under me, they can't have no defects. He said, you, you got to be able to walk, you got to be able to see, you got to be able to, to function. And he wasn't talking about a king because he never intended for the children of Israel to have a king. He was talking about the priest. With that being said, God has said, I'm not separating myself from Brenda because she can't walk as fast as she used to. I just got another duty to do, her, do with her. So I'm going to use her in the capacity to get my best out of her. But if you got something wrong with you, and I know you got to go to war, you got to make decisions, you got to think like this. I don't want you to be in a position where you hurt yourself even, fur even further. So let's say that Mephiba said, got to, let's say that Ziba is not telling the truth. Understand that he, that Leviticus tells us, I'm going to need you to be in tip-top shape to handle some of this stuff. I'm not against you. I just got to keep it real. It don't sound like Ziba is being totally honest. Because number one, David is not pulling in scriptures. And then another thing, David made a decision to get his guy all this stuff. That was out of the mouth of one witness. So that doesn't mean, what this is telling me is that there are sometimes I'm going to call a shot, but my shot may have to be recalled. So I think the more we read the word, we're going to find out whether or not this guy is, is believable. But based on the scriptures that God gave Moses, David is making a decision to give this guy all the stuff that belonged to Mephibah. So he spoke it out of his mouth. He's all the stuff that I gave because Mephibah said now had everything that Saul had. And being that Mephibah said didn't show up in this time of running, it appears that Ziba is speaking for him. Now Mephibah said is not there to speak for himself, but David opened up his mouth and decreed and gave this guy based on the information that he gave to say all that stuff that Jonathan's son, I gave to him. Now you can have it. Now he can't take that back. He gave it out. Well, we'll just say right now, it is known by God. Once you decree a thing, you got to carry it out. But the guy lying, that's my, that's my story, and I'm going to stick to it. But anyway, you came in there because people do this today, and I'm saying this, if I, you know, I, I, I kind of know, I know how the story is going to go forward. But there is nobody to testify against the guys. David in the condition that, that he's in, being a king, and then being in a position where he has he made a decision, it's made. So whether I think he's lying or not, David said, uh, that's my call on it. But for me to learn today is, David, having known what's going to happen in the future based on what I already know, having read this many years ago, Zabba lying. At least I believe, but we'll find out. Because I don't think that a cripple guy is getting ready to fight against a crazy guy, which is David's son. And then try to, David has given you everything that you need and got people working for you. 
And all of a sudden now you want that kind of power and you it is saying and you say, Well, I'm the truth. This guy, it just didn't sound right to me. But I be when me and David talked together, I said, Dave, you know, I was reading, I heard, I saw what you did. He's going, Yeah, Brun, I know you're right, but um, I, you know, you got I, well, I was tired, Brun. But anyway, let's go back to the word. That's what that'd be good discussions. And then we can all read it and then go find out what really happened and then draw a conclusion and say, because some things God just left for us to, he just left it. He know what it's all about, but he, he, he said, you'll learn, you're learning me. And the king said, and where is your master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he abides in Jerusalem. He stayed there for he said, today shall the house of Israel be restored to me, the kingdom of my father. No, I don't sound right. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, you are all, behold, all the stuff that pertained to Mephibah said is now yours. And then, and then Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in your sight, O Lord, my king. O king, I just, I beseech you. I, I, I really want to, thank you, king. Thank you for all this stuff that you just gave me. I can't hardly wait to get back home and get it. <laughs> and when King David, so King David done with that. And when King David came to Bahurim, behold, there came a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. And then Shimei used to work, had a position when Saul was king. Whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. Hey, you mother! That's why you're it was Shimei, you know, he would cuss. The Bible said he cursed. Now, curse means that I'm saying things about you that's not right, but he probably cussing too. And he cast stones. He throwing rocks at David, stones at David, and at all the servants of King David. This Shimei. I always know the story has not ended. You can you can you know the ending because you know God. But he came out there throwing rocks at David, stones at David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right in hand, on his right hand and on his left. David, David's not walking along. They dodging these stones his boy is throwing. And then said Shimei, yeah, when he cursed, come out, come out, you bloody man and you man of Belial. This is, now he got the upper hand right now, seemingly. Shimei, I remember this guy, bad guy. Son of a, of the devil, Belial. I'm just, you know. The Lord has returned upon you all the blood of the house of Saul. Now, now understand, David is king. Excuse me. David is anointed king. <coughs> he ain't just king by politician voting. He's called by God, so you got to be careful. But see, people think once you're in trouble that they can just kind of like, Got to be something wrong with you. The reason why you have all these problems. Uh -uh. Wait, then that means that what's wrong with Jesus? Anyway. Oh, shimmy, I run this mouth. He cursed, came out, came out. Come out, come out, you old bloody man without son of Belial. The Lord has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead you have reigned. In other words, the only reason you got that position because you 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 responsible for all that blood. That's not the truth. See, if we know the uh, chapters before now, you wouldn't see. If this boy had known the word of God, oh, Shimei, he wouldn't be acting this, this foolish. David had many times to kill Saul, but he didn't do it. David, even when a guy bragged on the fact that he killed Saul, he lost his life. But there would be times when people would feel as as, 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 as on a downtime and you standing knowing that you all you're doing is just trying to get out of harm's way and on your way you're going to have somebody or we will have somebody that will just say things that make you really want to lose your crown but don't lose that crown now the Lord has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul in whose stead thou hast reigned and the Lord has delivered the kingdom into your hand of Absalom your son that's why Absalom got the position your son get ready to take over oh, David. But where's God? 
I was thinking about yesterday when David told those priests, Zadok and Abathar, take the, take, the, take the ark back to the house. Take it on back down into Jerusalem. That was a good move on David. The ark ain't running. That's the word of God. I'm, I'm off base, but take the ark back to home base and let it be still. Perhaps David said, if I'm going to get back there, then I'm going back to where it is. I don't, have to, I don't have to run with the word. Let the word be the word. And if I'm running, it's me running. But take the ark back to where it ought to be in Jerusalem. And they took it back. And David kept moving and going forward. And now he, he confronted by some more stuff. His best friend left him. Old Shimei out running his mouth. Uh, Ziba lying to him. And he think that Mephibah said, I can understand that. And then he said, and so, and thus says Shimei, when he cursed, come out, come out, you old bloody man, a liar. He said, behold, you are taken in mischief because you are a bloody man. People can say things that people can actually say, yeah, you know, he did kill some people because you know, he killed you right, right. You still out of order. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king. Abishai was one of David's, uh, uh, that's, that's Joab's brother who will kill you in a minute. Abishai said, now you know what David, he said, David. He said, um, and Abishai said unto the, uh, to David, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Why are you letting that boy talk to you like that? Let me go over. I pray you and take off his head. I'm going to kill him. I won't think nothing of him. Then David said to Abishai, what have I to do with you, you son of Zariah? He said, boy, come on now. So let him curse. He said, go ahead, let him do that. It's because the Lord has said unto him, curse David. God has allowed it. God allowed him to do that. He can, nobody can do anything that God does not see or allow. Who shall then say, wherefore has that done so? If I, I can't, I can't, all I can tell you right now is he talking. I'm running. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, behold, my son, which came forth out of my bowels, my own boy, seek my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? He said, this boy, he just, he just cussing. He cursing. He's saying a lot of stuff. It just really, he's exposing himself. But And it's one thing. Who shall then say, wherefore has thou done so? In other words, if I, if I, get, if I get on his level, then I want to come back to verse 10, make sure that I read it last night, but it threw on me a little bit today. In other words, if I take matters into my own hand, it wouldn't be good. I just want to make sure I, I say that right. And so David said, boy, I got my own boy running up me. I'm all the way down here. I supposed to be in the room. This boy got me my own son. I ain't thinking about it. Well, if I'm thinking about it, he ain't going to get that much thought. He said, let that Benjamin, let him alone and let him curse. For the Lord has allowed it. It may be that the Lord will look upon my affliction. And that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing today. Now, if I keep my mouth closed, I'll, be, I'll probably be blessed for this. Might be. God let me see how to behave myself under pressure. You talking about you want to kill him. I get it. I could say go after him, but no, he said, no, let's just let him do his thing. And if I learn how to be quiet under this condition, then I'll be an example for old Brunner coming up in 2021. <laughs> so when somebody's saying something about her, she learn how to hold her peace. Sometimes you just got to learn how to hold your peace. And David said, it hurt. And you know I got the power. And I know you can kill him. Let the boy do his thing. God, God got a reason why that boy cousin like that. And what I'm going to do is be quiet. I'm going to use it as a way to maybe move. Maybe God will move in my behalf. If I don't say nothing or do nothing. And David went on. And David, and David and as David and his men went by the way. David talked to the boy. No, don't kill him. Shimei went on in the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. 
It hurt. Man under control. Control on the fire. Still doing it. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. So I guess they sat down and ate some of them raisins and cakes and drank a little bit of wine that, that Ziba brought, saying that much people said, say, I don't want to be king. So David's like, I'm, I, I dealt with that. I, this right here with this old shimmy, I acting crazy. I got to deal with that. And I'm ready to eat and think, but no, no, not right now. So the curtain closes on David and the people as as they run and they had to rest. We might be running, but he said, we got to take a break. So the movie goes toward the next person going back to Jerusalem and the tables are here. And Absalom and all the people, and all the people, the men of Israel came to Jerusalem and Ohithophel with him. Ohithophel is, is David's counsel, his friend. And it came to pass when Hushai, the archite, got it, David sent to say, go check him out and let me know what's going on. Send them young legs, run, run back and tell me, because we ain't got the internet. Run back and tell me what that boy talking about. You know I'm a warrior, right? Got to have somebody to know how to go in there. Shut your mouth up, Hushai. Right name. Go in there, Hush. Find out what's going on and keep me informed. And it came to pass when Hushai, the arch archite, David's friend, David's friend, David's friend. God give you somebody to be your friend. Don't ever think that when you're going through that, and I know a lot of times we all this against us, then we think you don't have a friend, but you do. The word said you do. Hushai came, was coming to Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, God say the king, God say the king. Oh, oh Hushai, I know how to do it. How you doing, Absalom? God say the king, God say the king. Now, this David friend now. And Absalom said to Hushai, is this kindness to your friend? Why when is thou not with David? Why you, 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 you hang out with my dad? And you speaking to me? How come you ain't running around with your dad? And Hushai said unto Absalom, no, but whom the Lord and his people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. Hushai lied. Hushai said, I, I, I'm doing what my king told me to do. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? If I'd serve your daddy, boy, I'm going to serve you. As I have served in your father's presence, so will I be in your presence. I'm going to do the same thing. Man, you know, I'm a man. Look, I helped your dad, and now I'm here to help you. Now, what you want me to do? Be in Absalom. You know he ain't got wisdom. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel. And that's David's friend that turns back on him, his counselor. So, uh, uh, so Absalom's feeling pretty good. I got, I got uh, Hushai on one side, and I got Ahithophel on the other side. Oh, I, got, I got this kingdom. And, and Absalom, David's son, said, Tell me, Ahithophel, give me some counseling among you. What shall I do? I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. So I, I'm trying to, what to do now? And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto your father's concubines, which he have left to keep the house. And ten women up there. <laughs> you know your daddy was sleeping with? Go up there. And, and which he has left to keep the house. And all Israel shall hear that you are abhorred of your father. Man, when you start sleeping with the women that your daddy slept with, they're going to really realize the ties between your daddy broken. So I'm going to need for you to go up there and sleep. Now, what kind of wisdom comes from an older man that tells a young man to go sleep with your daddy's women that he slept with? They were known as his concubines, not necessarily. They were not, they were not his legal wives, but his people that David said, okay, I'll sleep with you sometime too. He said, go up there and sleep with them. And all Israel shall hear that you are abhorred. Your daddy going to hate you for it. Then shall the hand of all that are with you be strong. Once they realize you ain't scared of your daddy, 
then you're gonna be you're gonna grab all them gonna gravitate towards you. So go on up there and sleep with this is the guy that's supposed to be somebody who feared uh God well enough to only speak the truth. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. And Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Where he get that strength from? But when you full of the devil, he slept with all the women. Man. In the sight. Like going to a place where they, you can see what they're doing, even if you can't see what they're doing, you know what they're doing. Like I went to a place, Louisiana one time when I was very young, and that's what they folk doing. Is it what you see? You can see it through the sheer curtain, what they were doing in, um, I came to that place in what they, Mardi Gras play, can't think of, I just know it's in uh, Louisiana, can't think of the name of it right now. This boy having sex with these women right in the presence of, of the city, and they could see him do it. Ahithophel said, this is really going to solidify the fact that these people are going to follow you because they're going to know that you really are against your dad. You are against your dad. And I wonder sometimes that Ahithophel, did he do that? And he used David's son to carry out the hatred that he had for David. That's crazy. Your best, I can't call him his best friend, but we'll find out when we get in the book of Psalms how he felt about this guy. I know. But Ahithophel, all right, last verse. And the counsel of, of, Hitha, of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired of the oracles of God. That means that whatever he said, people believed that this guy, word was solid. Back in those days, if he's, it's just like you got somebody today and you trust them so much so that their mouth, you would take God's word out of the mouth of a man and you trust that man so much until he is as you are speaking and hearing from God. The only way you're going to hear from God, you got to get in his word. That's how they looked at a, at, at a, um, a, a Hithophel. So was all the counsel of a Hithophel, both with David. In other words, David listened to him, and now his son is listening to him. But David already told God. <clears throat> he said, let every word of this guy say, let it fall to the ground. That's the end of chapter 16. It's interesting. And what am I taking out of this chapter? <clears throat> what I took out of this chapter is there's going to be a shaking. And only things that remain are the things that was really solid from the beginning. And I walk a lot of time with God. We have hard times. We will see the identity of people and what they're really made out of. You're going through some problems. You're going to really find out. And God will give you a friend. Some of your friends may be new. Some of your friends may be well known. But <clears throat> when you go through some hard times, people got a way of turning on you. So we can't get, uh, we can't act like when we go through it now that there's not an example. There is an example in the word of God for all of us at every time in life. But as we walk with God, God is like, I'm taking you through life. I'm showing you what happened. So when you go through this, you can refer back to what happened to them. And then you make your move. I believe if I had an opportunity, I would take my sons. And I would give them the word. And I would teach them the word for three and a half years. However long it takes me to teach them all these lessons. And when they walk out in life, they got a strong foundation. They got a resource to go back and say, you know what? Mama, didn't you tell me that this guy named Ahithophel was giving advice? He was his best friend. I met somebody named Ahithophel. He said, but I got a guy that I'm going to use like a whole shy. A whole shy. He's going to go and he's going he gonna to handle my business for me. He know how to do it too. He can act really good. So this is a book of life. 
and it's telling us about life. And if we learn from these people, we'll understand why Jesus said it is finished. All right. I'm ready to get into chapter 17. I hope you join me and um, y'all can drop me a line if you want to. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Love you.